Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to The Firewall. I'm Bill Whittle. Well, there were two stories on this Memorial Day weekend. Both looked kind of like tempests and teapots, but they weren't. They were important. The fine folks over at MSNBC had a reflective moment with host Chris Hayes, who, reflecting on the sacrifices of the men and women who put on a uniform and never come home again, had this to say. Um, I think it's interesting because it is, I think, very difficult to talk about the war dead and the fallen without invoking valor, without invoking the words heroes. Um, and I, I, why do I feel so comfortable about the word hero? I, I feel comfortable, uncomfortable about the word hero because it seems to me that it is so rhetorically proximate to justifications for more war. <laughs> um, Some people called for Chris Hayes to be fired for his remarks. I find that idea disgusting. No one can be in this opinion business and talk about what you believe if you're going to be worried 24-7 about your God-given right to speak your mind. And that right, derived from natural law, may have come from above, but it's paid for by the blood of those soldiers he disparaged with interest accruing annually in the form of parents and children, wives and husbands, who will never see their and our heroes ever again. Calling for Chris Hayes to be fired for speaking his mind is a bigger insult to the sacrifice of the men and women that have died for this country than anything this twerp could say, and he is a twerp. Actually, that's a little harsh. I suppose I should say he's rhetorically proximate to a twerp, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart when I say that clueless people rhetorically proximate to twerps like Chris Hayes are the causes of dark ages, death, and disease because throughout human history, Civilizations have risen and fallen and always in the same way with the same pattern. A gradual climb towards civilization and then prosperity, security, ease, and comfort. But in the end, time and time and time again, it is pampered, elitist, clueless opinion shapers like Chris Hayes that can't tell the difference between good and evil, or our side and theirs, and undermine that civilization by actually or figuratively slipping out of the palace at midnight and throwing open the gates of the city to the barbarians. Chris, this bubble of civilization is constantly, every hour of every day, defended and maintained by the effort, the dedication, and the blood of people who voluntarily sign up to go out into that world of pain that people like you and I can never imagine. You know, I make a point to search out online video of people having their heads hacked off with knives, or sitting handcuffed by Taliban savages screaming Allahu Akbar as they butcher them to death. I've seen crowds in Tehran hang homosexuals with construction cranes shouting the same thing. I've seen the Zetas, the Mexican drug cartels that Attorney General Eric Holder supplied weapons to, take off people's heads with a chainsaw. I've seen people begging for their lives burned alive in a ditch in Africa because they were Tutsi rather than Hutu or the other way around as if it mattered. Why do I do this? Because I don't ever want to go a single day without realizing just how far Mogadishu is from Disney World and I don't ever, ever, ever want to forget the men and women that give their lives to keep that away from here. You know why I'm showing kittens and puppies instead of begging innocents screaming as their heads are sawed off, Chris? Because men and women die every day to make sure American kids don't have to watch that stuff. But you and I are adults, and we should know better. So that was one story. The decline of a civilization past its better days as reflected in the clueless, self-absorbed, conflicted self-hatred of those bored, weak, and silly people that control at whim the information the rest of us get parceled out. Spun for our own good, of course, by our moral and intellectual betters like Chris Hayes and these deep-thinking patriots. But on that same weekend, 1,800 people led by a naturalized American citizen put a capsule of their own design onto a rocket of their own design and did what only the United States, Russia, Japan, and the European Union have done before, resupplied the International Space Station. It's the first commercial resupply mission, and 1,800 people down in Hawthorne, California, did it flawlessly. When the astronauts aboard the space station opened the doors to the Dragon capsule, do you know what one of them said? He said that Dragon had that new car smell. You know why it had that new car smell? Because it's a new car. Very few human organizations have ever put men into space. Three of them are nations, Russia, the United States, and China. The other two are small private collections of free citizens, free people 
operating in the only place on planet Earth that free people can still work miracles of this order. In 2004, Bert Rutan, Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, and Scaled Composites of Mojave, California, put the first private citizen in space, Bert's lifelong friend, Mike Melville. And on Memorial Day weekend in 2012, PayPal founder Elon Musk and his company, SpaceX of Hawthorne, California, flew their privately built Dragon and Falcon spacecraft to yet another perfect mission. Elon Musk put his PayPal money not where his mouth is, but where his heart is. And you want to talk about heart? It wasn't always this easy, you know, it never is. Listen to the people in the background who put their love and their energy and their passion where their hearts are on SpaceX's first successful flight four years ago. Nico. Ah, Today's celebration is confirmed. And Kestrel Ignition. You know what I like best about all of this? Both Mike Melville, the first private astronaut, and Elon Musk, founder of the first private company to supply the space station, have something in common. They're both immigrants, coincidentally, both from South Africa. Both of them woke up one day and realized they were Americans. A man who used to have no problem whatsoever speaking of our fallen soldiers as heroes once wrote of people like Mike and Elon, saying people like that have to find their way to America or die trying because America the land of the free and the home of the brave is, in his words, still a beacon, still a magnet for all of those who must have freedom, for all the pilgrims from all the lost places who are hurtling through the darkness towards home. Decline is a choice. Choose wisely. And if you want to keep messages like this coming, go to declarationentertainment.com today and become a citizen producer. We really need your help. I'm Bill Whittle. We'll see you next time on The Firewall.